What's up guys, Justin here with TheCGEssentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna model the high trestle bridge inside a blender. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so what we wanna do with this model is we actually wanna use curves in order to do this. So curves are gonna make this more like live and easy to use. And so the way that we wanna do this is we wanna start by just adding a path. So I'm just gonna to go to top down view, do a shift A, go to curve. We're gonna add a path. And I'm gonna move the path over like this. And remember, a path is just a series of points that are in here. And in this case, I'm actually gonna select these three, tap the X key and dissolve those vertices. Because what I want, right, is I just want um, two points to make up my bridge. And we're using this to set our length. There's a lot of things that we're gonna set on this. But let's say that we're going to move this, we'll actually move it 100 degrees on the X axis or 100 feet on the X axis for right now. It probably needs to be longer, but this is a good place to start. And so what we wanna do is we wanna draw a profile for our bridge. So the way that I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna start by toggling vertex snapping on. I pretty much always have vertex snapping on in my scenes. I can link to a video about that in the notes down below. But then I just wanna do a shift right click and I just want to add a plane on this corner. And I'm just gonna rotate this on the Y axis 90 degrees, and then we're gonna use this. I'm actually gonna move it up like this, and we're gonna use this to create the profile for our bridge. So I'm just gonna tab into edit mode and make some adjustments. So in this case, I'm gonna move it down. I'm gonna move this across. And remember, I'm basically just generating the profile for the bridge piece. So I'm gonna do a control R and um, scroll my mouse up once and then left click. And I'm just gonna use this in order to create the width of the curbs like this. So I'm assuming I'm gonna have a little curb, curb over here, little curb over here. And then I'm just gonna select these two corners and I'm gonna extrude them up like this in order to generate our curve. And actually if you select the edges, you won't get this middle point in here, but I'm just gonna select this edge and I'm going to delete the edge right here. So now what we have is we have a profile that we want to extrude along this path, right? And the way that we're gonna do that is we're gonna use the curve functionality in Blender. So remember, this is a curve object, which means it has a different set of options over here. So if I go in here and I look at my geometry, for example, we wanna go into the bevel settings which by the way is weird nomenclature for what we can do here. I have no idea why this is under bevel, but we wanna select the option for object. And so what we want is we want this to extrude this profile along this path. However, if I click the drop down right now, it's not going to work, right? The reason it's not going to work is because this is in here as a mesh object. You can see when you select it that this is in here with the little triangle, meaning it's a mesh. Well, for this to work, we need to give it a curve object. So to do that, we can take this object, go into object, convert, and select the option for curve. Notice how when we select the option for curve, now if we tab into edit mode like this, notice how this is actually made up of curve points rather than being a mesh. So now, if I select this curve right here, I can set that plane, which I'm actually going to rename real quick. So I'm just gonna call this um, floor or bridge floor. So now if I go into my object settings right here and click on bridge floor, notice what that's going to do is that's going to allow me to take this bridge and extrude it along this surface right here. And so we have a little bit of a problem and the little bit of a problem is right now this is up on its side, right? Well, the reason why it's up on its side is just because the orientation of this object isn't correct. So we can fix this by selecting our object, going into effect only origins right here. And so in this case, we're just gonna rotate that object origin like this. So in this case, it actually wants the Y axis to be up right here. So we're just gonna rotate this 90 degrees like this. And notice how this origin point sets where this extrudes along the curve. So with this object origins selected, we're just going to move this so that it aligns with this corner right here. So now this curve is actually being extruded along this path. The other thing we want to do is inside of our um, curve settings for our NURBS path, we want to check the box for fill caps 
like this. So now what we've got is we've got this profile that's being extruded along this curve. Well now what I want to do is I actually want to add some more detail in here before we start adding railings. So the way that I'm going to do that is I'm actually going to select this curve. I'm going to tab into edit mode and I'm actually going to select these two points right here and I'm going to duplicate them by doing a shift D and I'm going to duplicate them up. And so basically what I'm doing is I want to take this and I want to extrude it up like this and I'm actually going to use this as a railing piece. So I'm going to take this whole thing, I'm going to scale it way down because I don't want my railing to be as big as my curb. So something like this and I'm just going to move it so that it aligns with this corner right here. And so if we rotate out of this straight on view, notice what it's doing is it's extruding this along that path. Well, what I can do is, first off, I'm gonna move it over because you gotta think about how your railing's actually going to go in here. So it's going to have basically a support that runs this way. But then I'm just going to duplicate that a couple times. So up and over, up and over like this. So maybe something like this. Well, what that's done is that's come in here and that's actually created these different railing pieces that are gonna be extruded along this object. Well, then I can take the whole thing, select them and duplicate them like this. And I'm just gonna scale these on the Y direction to negative one. And then I'm gonna move these over. And so you can see how this is a pretty cool way to do this because we can actually select that path. So if I was to, I'm going to turn off effect only origins, but if I was to go into like top down mode and select this path right here, remember that it's two points. Well, I can move those points and this extrusion is going to follow along these points. We could also extrude another point like this. And notice how it's going to keep extruding those profiles along this surface. Well, now what I want to do is I want to add my railing pieces and my rotating steel. So let's start by modeling out a railing. So I'm just going to come in here. We'll go to a top down view. And I find sometimes it's helpful to turn on wireframe so that I can actually see some of the edges in here. We could also probably go into solid mode and see this a little bit better. But what I want to do is I want to draw out my uh, one of my railing supports. So I'm just going to add a plane right here. I'm scale it down like this. I'm going to align it with the end. I'll extrude it up a bit. And this is probably going to need to get wire, wider, so we'll scale it out. Make sure that it's aligned. And then in edit mode, I'm just going to select this top surface and tap the I key to inset it. And then we're just going to go to front view and we're just going to extrude it and move it over like this so that it aligns with our surface. And we could move it up a little bit if we wanted to, just as long as it aligns. So now what we have is we have this post right here, and we could turn wireframe back off, but now we have this post that's gonna run along this surface. Well, what I wanna do is I wanna create copies of this post that run all the way along the bridge. So the way that I can do that is I can actually come in here and by the way my Bonnie model is way too big so we're going to scale that down a little bit and before I do this I feel like my bridge is a little bit wide so I'm just going to come in here real quick and move all of this over a little bit and so now what I want to do is I want to copy this all the way along the surface and so the way that we're going to do that is we're gonna add an array modifier. So I'm just gonna go to my modifiers, add an array, and notice how right now we can set this to do a fixed count for a number of these, but we don't really wanna do that with the relative offset. What I wanna do instead is I want to fit to a curve. So we're gonna select the option for fit curve, and then we're gonna select our path 
that this goes along. Okay, and so one thing you might notice when you do this is if you're having an issue like me where it's not doing the entire curve, what you need to make sure that you've done is if you use the scale on this, you wanna make sure that you've got in here and you've applied your rotation and scale like this. So once you do that, this is gonna work properly. And what we can do is we can set this with a relative offset or a constant offset, and we can use this to set the spacing of the rails in here. So if we do a constant offset, we can actually set the distance between these like this. So we could set this so that maybe we have like five feet between the supports like this. But again, the cool thing about this is if we were to select our path that's making up this entire thing, notice how our railing is gonna fill in automatically as well. So another thing I might do is I might select this object, tab into edit mode, and then we're actually going to duplicate it. So I'm gonna do a Shift D. And notice how I'm inside of this object, but if I scale this on the Y axis to negative one, and then place it like this, notice how now we have these supports on both sides of our bridge like this. And so now what we wanna do is we wanna add those cool kind of turning um, rectangular shapes that go around the outside of it, right? So the way that we can do that is we're gonna go to front view and I'm just going to add a plane. So I'm gonna add a plane right here, I'm gonna rotate it 90 degrees and I'm gonna scale it up like this. So something like this, we're gonna try to center it on this object and then I'm gonna tab into edit mode. I'm gonna tap the I key to inset it. So we're gonna inset this in a little bit. We're gonna tap the X key and we're gonna delete this face. So now we've got one of these objects right here. Well, I'm just gonna tab into edit mode and extrude this just a little bit so it's got some thickness like this. So now we've got this object in here with some thickness that's ready to be um, copied along this bridge. And so what we wanna do is we wanna start by doing what we did before where we add the array modifier in here. So I'm just gonna select the array and again, we wanna make sure that we've applied our rotation and scale for this to work properly, but we wanna make sure that we're fitting this to our curve. And our curve is our NURBS path, right? Well, now what that's doing is that's offset or extruding this based on that distance. So, and we wanna go ahead and set it to a constant offset because that allows us to set more of a value. Right, so in this case, maybe I want one of these every 20 feet. My bridge is a little short right now for what the real world size of the bridge would be. So we might make that longer in a minute. But notice that right now, what that does is that only gives us our distance, right? But there's no way in here to actually like uh, give it a rotation, right? So there's no like, uh, so there's no like rotate 15 degrees in here or anything like that. However, you can affect your rotation by adding an object offset. So that's gonna allow you to use the transformation of an object to affect um, the orientation of the objects that are created along your path. So what we wanna do in this situation is we actually wanna do a shift A and we want to add an empty. So we just wanna add a plane axis empty right here. And so what that's gonna allow us to do is that's gonna allow us to turn on our object offset and reference that empty. So now, Notice how this is moving around a little bit in that direction because that empty is moving around. So in this case, what I wanna do is I wanna take that empty and I wanna rotate it on the X axis, however many degrees we think this needs to be. So if we look at this, we could probably say that each one of these needs to rotate about 15 degrees like this. So notice how in addition to getting our distance offset, we're also getting our rotational offset. We do wanna make sure that this is aligned with this object so that it's not going down in the distance. Uh, we wanna make sure that it's kind of maintaining the same height like this. And so now we've got this set up where it's gonna auto add those extra pieces in here. And actually something that would be kind of fun if you decided that you wanted to do this is you could actually keyframe the location of this point right here. So you could make this add those automatically to create like an animation or something like that. 
All right, so one other thing to note about this is it's a little bit clunky when you have the curve modifier in here actually getting like materials applied to this. And so that gets a little bit clunky because it kind of breaks your array modifier. So what you would have to do is apply the array modifier um, first. So you would have to apply this so that it's finalized and then you would convert that to a mesh and you could start applying materials to it. So usually what I would recommend is taking something like this and using it to set up your bridge and then maybe just taking the whole thing and like duplicating it over here. So then you could take that object, you could apply it, all that different stuff, right? So then you've got a live copy on the left-hand side if you need it. And then you've got an object over here where you can actually start applying materials to it. So like I said, not my favorite thing in the world, but um, that is something that you are gonna have to do once you decide that you wanna come in here and apply materials. All right, so I'll link to another video where you can use this method in order to create more of like a balcony rail um, on like a deck as well. So this is a really powerful way to add things along paths in Blender. But leave a comment below, let me know what you thought. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.